Now in the series of Sistod's uh, lecture, we come to another important topic that is related to the Echinococcus granulosus cystode that is the hydrated cyst. Okay, this is a very important topic. This hydrated cyst is a very important topic. Uh, from exam point of view, it is asked as the short notes and a specimen is also sometimes given in the microbiology practical examinations. Like in our examination, there was a specimen of the hydrated cyst, both intact and the cut open uh, cysts were there. We had to identify those cysts and then answer the questions given there. So, hydrated cyst is a very important question. So, let's start the hydrated cyst. It is the larval form of the Echinococcus granulosus, which forms the cystic lien in the liver and other viscera of the man, sheep, and the other herbivores. This is the Di uh, definition of the hydrated cyst what is this this is the larval form of echinococcus granulosus so what does it forms this hydrated cyst uh, i mean this larval form okay how does this hydrated cyst form when the larval form forms larval form the echinococcus granulosus forms the cystic lien then the hydrated cyst is formed okay so when the larval form forms the cystic lien in the liver or other viscera then we see the hydrated cyst formation then now coming to the infecting agent we have talked about this in the cystodes lecture series the infective agent in case of echinococcus granulosus is the eggs what is the mode of transmission mode of transmission is simple fico oral route what is the pathogenesis then of this hydrated cyst if you remember the uh, life cycle of the echinococcus granulosus then you can uh, very easily write about the pathogenesis also of the hydrated cyst the pathogenesis is that the intermediate host like man or herbivores like sheep etc when they ingest the eggs through the fecal oral route from the dogs with fecal oral route that means if the food is contaminated with the feces of a dog who was contaminated or who was infected with the echinococcus granulosus then that food if some uh, intermediate host like man or the sheep ingests then the eggs will get entry into the man or the sheep whoever eats that contaminated food next is the embryo is released from that egg from that egg embryo is released and that embryo penetrates the intestinal wall reaches to the portal circulation and from the portal circulation it reaches to the liver and other viscera okay from the portal circulation it reaches to the liver and other viscera now when the embryo develops into the cyst like structure it is called as the hydrated cyst until and unless it gets converted to the cyst like structure we cannot call it a as the hydrated cyst so once it's developed one once it develops into the cyst like structure then we call it as hydrated cyst and where do we see it most commonly we see it in liver lungs brain muscles kidney etc in different organs it can be seen okay so this is the pathogenesis how this hydrated cyst is formed inside the body after ingestion of the egg of the echinococcus granulosus coming to the structure coming to the structure of the hydrated cyst this structure is very important so the structure consists of the following things the first one is the cyst wall the cyst wall composed of three layers pericyst ictocyst and the endocyst see here this is the pericyst this is ictocyst and then the internal one is the endocyst then we have the brood capsules the brood capsules arise from the inner side of the endocyst and these secrete the hydrated fluid okay so this clear space inside this is the filled it is filled with the hydrated fluid this clear space is filled with the hydrated fluid and this something uh, bang i mean this orange like i mean you know you have seen orange fruit or apple that when it hangs from the uh, tree branches similarly these structures these round structures hanging from the hanging from the endocyst these are called as the brood capsules okay these hanging structures are called as the brood capsules and they secrete the hydrated fluid their hydrated fluid is there okay and this hydrated fluid is pale yellow colored fluid and it is highly antigenic and anaphylactic 
next we have the hydrated sand what is that hydrated sand so when some of the brood capsules are broken off from the endocyst and they get deposited at the bottom of the hydrated cyst this is this is called as the hydrated sand to see here some of the brood capsules have dissociated from the endocyst and have settled in the bottom of the in the bottom of the you know uh, of the hydrated cyst these are called as the hydrated sand okay these are called as the hydrated sand so these are all the uh, things that which make the structure of the hydrated cyst so it consists of cyst wall brood capsules hydrated fluid and the hydrated sand now coming to the clinical features due to the hydrated cyst what are the clinical features with which the patient presents once he has got this hydrated cyst anywhere in his or her body so this hydrated cyst can cause the symptoms due to two effects one is the pressure effect pressure effect and the other one is the due to rupture of the cyst what why is there this pressure effect this pressure effect is because there is formation of cyst so whenever there is formation of a cyst the underlying structures or overlying structures will get you know they will get uh, you know they will uh, i mean they they will get displaced from their place so when they get displaced from their place then of course there will be pressure over those uh, structures and that pressure causes the damage and those damage leads to some symptoms like if the if this uh, hydrated cyst is present in the liver then there will be jaundice because the hepatobiliary system will not be able to function properly so that's why there will be jaundice due to pressure effect in lungs what will cause it may compress any bronchiole it may compress the trachea it may compress any uh, alveoli a bunch of alveoli so that may cause leads to dyspnea okay then in the brain it can cause epilepsy because it, it can compress any uh, part of the brain so that compression will lead, will lead to epilepsy okay so these are the symptoms based on their location due to pressure effect now there may be some other symptoms also if this cyst ruptures and the hydrated fluid gets released now those symptoms are in liver if that ha happens then there will be liver enlargement in lungs if that happens then there will be start of chest pain if kidney kidney uh, if in kidney if it occurs then there will be hematuria okay so these are all the symptoms that we can see if the hydrated cyst occurs in any person okay now what is the fate of the cyst so we have seen that uh, what are the symptoms with which a patient or a person will present if he or she has the cyst now if he couldn't present to the hospital or to the doctor then what will happen to that cyst so there may be three fates three uh, fates can occur to that cyst three uh, that is out of them the first thing that there may occur is spontaneous resolution that the cyst gets disappear disappeared completely if the person is lucky enough then this disappearance will occur the cyst will spontaneously resolve okay other thing what may happen is the rupture of the cyst if the patient is unlucky then there will be rupture of the cyst and if rupture occurs then there will be anaphylactic shock that is a very fatal condition the third thing that may occur to the cyst is if the patient is neither lucky nor unlucky then there will be the calcification of the cyst and further compression of the structures nearby structures and then symptoms will aggravate now how will we diagnose it what is the investigation that we can do to diagnose it so most important of all the investigation is the imaging the x-ray and the usg presence of the cyst may be visualized by the imaging studies molecular studies we can do pcr can be used to diagnose antibody if we are able to detect by elisa in the blood then also we can indirectly detect the presence of the hydratic cyst if the hydrated fluid microscopy is done fluid collected after surgical removal of the cyst the brood capsule can be seen and then after removal we can diagnose that it was hydrated cyst suppose 
if it was in the liver we diagnose it by the usg that in the liver there is certain cyst we remove it by surgery and then we send it to the microbiological laboratory or pathological laboratory and there the lab, uh, the uh, pathologist or the microbiology specialist he reported that there was root capsules in that fluid that means the doctor now can confirmly say that there was hydrated cyst okay next is the histological examination similarly if the uh, cyst has been sent to the pathologist then he will stain that walls of the uh, of walls of that hydrated cyst and in if uh, that uh, you know if that cyst is stained with different stains then the walls can be demonstrated other than that we can do the casoni test this is an indirect test and has been uh, you know uh, has this uh, is this is not done uh, nowadays casoni test was very old test not so much frequently done but you can write it in the exam next is the treatment part so how can you treat it so for treatment you have to do pair pair means puncture aspiration infusion and re-aspiration procedure so suppose it was in the liver the cyst was in the liver then you puncture you puncture means you injected any syringe okay i mean you pierce with any syringe to reach to that uh, cyst that is called as puncture you aspirate the fluid first then you aspirate the fluid and you will infuse certain drug with the same syringe you infuse certain drug and then again re-aspirate so by this procedure this is called pair procedure and this is very famous procedure recently and that can be done to treat that hydrated cyst then we can do the surgical removal of course as we have talked here that we remove the uh, cyst from the liver if it is present in liver or anywhere it is present in the body we'll, we can remove it by surgery other than that we have the albendazole as the medical therapy for that hydrated cyst okay this is all about the hydrated cyst you can next we will talk about the cysticercosis in which we will talk about neurocysticercosis as well so till then stay tuned